Hi, I'm Liz Thompson and I've got some exciting news for the people who know me. Uh, of course, we've been doing for the last 19 years, we've been doing special interest tours in Europe. But I've got something very special for you, which I've customised, talking to Mike Smith, one of our most popular music hosts on our tours. And I know many of you who have not only met great friends on our tours, but also have come back with us so many times, would be aware of, of Mike. Great music college credentials. He's got the knowledge on uh, music from the composers themselves to the actual structure of their works, and he goes to great trouble to explain that. He's so inclusive in the way he, he speaks to people on tour, and we all have such a great discussion about the classical music that we love. And of course, even the composers that we're not too keen on, they come up into conversation, and that makes for a very lively conversation, doesn't it? Mike, in particular, has been uh, in classical music radio for so many years as well, in both management and on the air. And so he's just perfect for the role, and he will be really the leader of this tour. But of course, I also have the history connections for you, and to talk about the places that we're visiting. So let's have a look at what I'm proposing to you. There is a tour going in September. Now, it ties in with some major musical festivals in Europe. So we're leaving in September, arriving in Bonn. Of course, that's where Beethoven was born. We'll be going to Beethoven House, and it's one of the best museums for Beethoven. And uh, there's a Schumann connection as well, as you may well know. In Bonn, that is where he died. And so the composer trails start opening up, and it will be at the very time of the Beethoven Festival. We move on, and if I can just get Google involved here, here's a Google map. We go from Bonn through to Eisenach, and Eisenach, apart from having the castle which inspired many of the scenes in uh, Tannhäuser, Wagner's masterpiece, uh, there's also the place where Bach was born. So it's a big Bach occasion in Eisenach. We'll be tracing Bach there. We'll also be moving on then, another Google map, thank you very much Mr. Google, moving on to Leipzig. And I know some of you will say, well, that's certainly a Bach trail. It certainly is. And apart from Bach, there are many musical trails in Leipzig. Richard Wagner was born there. There's uh, Robert and Clara Schumann lived there. And Mendelssohn. Now, Felix Mendelssohn has a festival devoted to him at that time of year in Leipzig. Plus, we'll be visiting Mendelssohn House. Now, that is a beautiful museum. It's the apartment where he lived in Leipzig. <laughs> While we're in Leipzig, we're close enough now to go back into uh, the Baroque again. We'll go to visit the Handel Museum, and that's at Halle, just a short drive from Leipzig. So we'll take you out there. And the musical instruments in that museum are really spectacular. So that's Leipzig. So after Leipzig, hmm, another map. From Leipzig, we'll go down to Prague via Dresden. We'll have lunch in Dresden, have a look at the... The Semper Opera. After the new Royal Theatre was destroyed by fire in 1869, Gottfried Semper was commissioned to design a new opera house to replace his former theatre, where Richard Wagner had given his first performances of works such as The Flying Dutchman. Dresden has many highlights, including this monumental mosaic made of 25,000 mice and porcelain tiles, the 102 metre Procession of the Dukes, honouring 1,000 years of rule. The painting somehow survived the bombing raids of 1945. Very interesting place to visit, right on the, uh, what they call the balcony of Europe, will overlook the Elbe River. Very pretty too. At the southern side of the Semper Opera House is the Sphinger, named after the site behind the original fortifications of the town. This 18th century complex with a view of the Saxon King John through the entrance arcade was made into an open air ballroom for festivals and tournaments. The main entrance, the Crown Gate, is one of the landmarks of Dresden.
and then Prague. Now in Prague, it's about the same time as the Dvorak Festival, and uh, we'll be looking at the concerts available there. We'll know these concerts through the year, of course, as contracts are signed and, and everything settled, but we are linking in with as many of the festivals as possible. Town Square, the visitor marvels at such sites as the Baroque St. Nicholas Church, as the former Hussite Church, Our Lady Before Tin, and the square's centerpiece, the astronomical clock on the face of the old town hall. The clock dates from 1490, when it said the master clockmaker, Hannes, who built it, was blinded so that he couldn't repeat his masterpiece. Hourly, the twelve apostles revolved through opened windows above this timeless piece of craftsmanship. Prague will be um, seeing so many sites and we also for the first time we're going to take you after Prague to Littermichel. Now th this is the town where Smetna, Legic Smetna was born. So we're going to go to his museum, the place where he was actually born, which is right opposite the castle in that township in the Czech Republic. And so we'll make a stop there, have lunch, and then head on to Vienna. Welcome to Vienna, the city of dreams. Vienna, or Wien, the capital of Austria, 
was once the home of the Habsburgs and residents of great composers such as Mozart, Beethoven, Haydn, Brahms, Schubert, Strauss and of course many more. Vienna was for many centuries the political and economic center of the Austrian Empire under the Habsburg family and between 1867 and 1918 the capital of the Austro-Hungarian monarchy. Today the city dominates the economic and cultural life of Austria. Its population is less than two million people. The State Opera House, which was burned down in 1945, was rebuilt in 1955. The inner city was once surrounded by protective walls. The walls were raised in 1857, and in their place a broad boulevard, the Ringstrasse, was built and subsequently lined with imposing buildings, monuments and parks. Vienna is a city of numerous museums and art galleries. Among the most prominent are the Albertina, the Museum of the 20th Century, Kunsthistorisches Art Museum, the Natural History Museum and the Museum of Fine Arts. There's also the Hofburg, the former Imperial Palace, the oldest part of which was built during the 13th century. Vienna's buildings are of many different architectural styles. Gothic, Renaissance, Baroque and typical Austrian Biedermeier structures are found together with early 20th century barrack-like apartment buildings and modern apartment buildings of the post-World War II period. The Gothic St. Stephen's Cathedral, rebuilt between the 13th and 15th century, is in the centre of the inner city and has a 113 metre steeple that can be seen from all parts of Vienna. During the reign of Emperor Franz Josef I, Vienna became a modern city and a capital of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, Vienna was the centre of psychoanalysis under its originator, Sigmund Freud. One of the big attractions of Vienna is its music and its music museums to some of the great composers. And in Vienna, well, we're back on all the trails again, aren't we? We've got so many trails to follow, including very moving place which is called Testament House where Beethoven wrote his testament revealing for the first time that he was deaf and him of all people with such a talent it's very moving but it's a really very nice tiny apartment place which we'll go in have a look around and then we'll go on to one of those great great treasures of Vienna itself we'll be having our farewell dinner at another Beethoven site where he wrote part of the Ninth Symphony. He wrote it in many parts of course in Baden and around Vienna and also in this place in the wine district. So that's just a general idea of what we're doing with this tour. And with Mike Smith along, such a genial guy and such a knowledgeable music host, this is going to be a really special tour. And for those who know Mike, It'll be a reunion time for you. You have your reunions in Australia, I know. But we've, when you come with us on this tour, we'll all have a reunion. And even if you haven't been with Mike before, uh, this is a tour which really gets into the composers and will follow their trails through Europe. I hope you can join us.